Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the round 17 edition of the Football Town Show. And what a night of futsal we have to bring to you, because starting it all off is top of the table, North Melbourne taking on bottom boys, Richmond. Then it's Baldwin taking on Fitzroy. Fitzroy desperate for points because the teams in the relegation zone are slowly catching up to them. After that, it is one of the El Clasicos of the league. Well, a huge derby clash to say the least as Metropolitan take on old-time rivals Pasco Vale. Brunswick take on Mickleham, two teams who have found themselves in the relegation zone. Desperate points to say the least. And they're joined by Brimbaker, who are also down there. Good form of late, but they face a tough task as they take on the Frenchman, Sufjan Sufi, and the Green Machine of Ashburn. And to round it all up, it's Essendon taking on Paran. Essendon trying their best to achieve fourth place superiority in this season's Nike V League Premiership. Well, last week's results, no real major upsets. The talking point of the night was the last clash. It was Bomb Boys Richmond taking on second last Mickelham. And of course, Richmond, after 16 rounds, were yet to receive three points in the V-League. So this week was the winning streak set to continue as they took on the Invincibles North Melbourne. Stranger things have happened in the V-League, of course, it was only a few seasons ago when North Melbourne were hot contenders for the title and they dropped points to Bottom Boys Doncaster in a stunning 3-3 draw. But it wasn't to be on this night, North Melbourne coming out absolutely firing. They jumped off to a quick 2-0 lead and sure enough, Alex Jankovic, the second half specialist, also got on the score sheet against the Bottom Boys. Stick around to catch a replay of that in the goal of the week time later on. What a stunning left foot it was. The return of the Barrientos brothers for North Melbourne seemed to add some extra spark into the invincible step. They've been sorely missed after the past few weeks and seem to have made hard work of easy tasks. But on this night they went into the second half with a four goal lead and it continued in the second. And in form Adam Cooper as well as Mirza Pedic making easy work of the Richmond defence. With the three points secured, North Melbourne pushed and pushed to get their goal tally up. Of course, Pascal Vale is second on the V-League ladder, and North Melbourne is still inferior on goal difference, though. Mirza Pedic, the big informed striker of the V-League, did his part, scoring four stunning goals on the night. Well, I've been training a bit of outdoor, so, you know, getting fit. Once you're fit, you can, of course, uh, play better and, and uh, last more on the court. So I train, you know, a bit of outdoor, and um, I'm happy to, happy to help the boys out and score as many as, as possible. I always set a goal. You know, get one at least and then see how many you can get for the night. So um, I'm, I'm pretty pleased for this season and hopefully I can keep it up. Fitzroy took on Baldwin in the next clash of the night. Of course, Fitzroy were hurt off their League Cup win from Friday night futsal action against CF Brunswick. And Baldwin, well, they're looking to maintain some great head form heading into the Cup end of the season. And it was Benny here at Bodo who got him off to a flying start or a right foot pigeonhole it was. But it proved to be a real goal fest, both teams going goal for goal in the first half. Ivan Zilic once again proved to be the catalyst of all things good for Baldwin. And at the other end, Rashidi did what he did best, streaming forward and scoring the cracker of a goal. The young up-and-coming player Mark Saric once again had his shooting boots on this week. He seems to pop up time and time again to get vital goals for this Baldwin side. At the other end, it was Juan Sastre who was unlucky not to put his Fitzroy side back on level terms. He's been in fine form since returning to the V-League. And of course, it was young Mark Saric who put Baldwin in front just before the stroke of half-time. The second half, however, started well for Fitzroy. Juan Sastro with one of the goals of the night, followed up by the Italian international, also unlucky not to win goal of the week with this one. Oh, well, toe poker. But of course it was Ivan Zillo Zilic with the second half blitz on the Fitzroy goals who secured yet another win for Baldwin. He's been so crucial in the past few weeks and so instrumental with this Baldwin side. Manager Matt O'B must be over the moon to have an experienced campaigner like him in this Baldwin outfit. Surely a huge threat heading into cup action with him on board. And of course, young player who's really stepped up, especially on this night, Huey Russell. Yeah, um, a few guys uh, couldn't make it today, Tony Saric. Um, they asked him to come down last week, I did it again this week. Much better this week. Uh, those Pasco Vale boys, they're unbelievable. This week, yeah, we had a grip on the game. Much better result.
a lot at stake here. Ashburn have uh, the gymnast Kikaridis, the Frenchman Sufi, Tavares, Rebotas, Deng, Correa, Evangelista, and Tommy Robinson. Pretty much a full lineup, just uh, Parag missing out. Is that uh, Parag's playing? Oh, was he? Yes, bring back out Kudichu, Borchett, Ameli, Karic, Kausovic, Vasilevsky, Vasilevic, and Alicevic. And he could be the key, Aiden Alicevic, tonight. Yeah. Yes, he so often has been for Greenbank. But they're better than that, you know, they've had a good season, very unlikely. They've pushed up with the top two teams in Pascavao and they'll be able to evolve, so they are a good team. Well, look, either way, to come back up into the V League so many times is a great effort. I mean, the State League, and it's battles out there, Stan, man. You know, you're the State League Commissioner. Yes, yeah, that's right. Now, Mustanovic, the carriage. Oh, the Raiders, I think, got some leg on that, you know. I think he got a bit of a leg on it. And, uh, did you know, Stady, that he's wearing the uh, shoes of former V-League MVP player Fernando Di Marais, the King of Futsal? Well, then he's got a lot of shoes to give up to, hasn't he? Well, so far he is in line to win that prestigious award! Oh, it's up right there. It was that carry to all. Reyes had no idea they did he, Neil? Not really, was he? <laughs> I really, um, the timeouts need to be used by managers a bit earlier, I think, Stat Man. They need, they need not be afraid of using it in the first five, ten minutes if they've been a bit rattled. If one bloke keeps his pool tonight, Aiden Adesevich, it could be forwards tonight. Oh, and there's the first yeah. point, Vasilevsky! Alex Vasilevsky! The big defender who so often streams forward. Here you see, well, it was Karic who did a lovely kind of flick back. And I mean, this is how well that Brimbank side is reading each other out there. Straight away to the back post. And uh, we talked right at the start of the night about simple futsal with, you know, North Melbourne's and Pasco Vale. And there it is. You know how old Jermaine Degg is, that man? Probably a young lad. But... He is probably a young lad. We don't know. We don't know. Sufjan! The Frenchman has put Ashburn back on level terms, Neil. What a finish there. Great finish by the Frenchman. It's just typical of the uh, big Frenchman. Great ball by Parat. Yes, Parat, the uh, out and out defender. Lovely vision by him. And a typical uh, lovely fake for Souffle there to perfection, as usual. Yes, How that... often does he beat yes. keepers like that? Find his Benny Hill run to perfection. Or oh, Chet tries his luck. Side ball Brimbank. Vasanovic wants it, he gets it. Tries the topo. This is dangerous, it's the Frenchman. Great save, Kuzichu. That was in your creek with Fritz's by the leg there by Kuzichu. They've got nothing to show that spread or Brimbank Hill. No premiership, no cups. So they've got to fight for the League Cup. Half-time here, stat man. As we'll say, Brimbank in the State League haven't won a State League championship. Was oh, that Ben Dinkin, stat man? Yes. And if you notice, Kit Reedus wears the white boots on uh, V League night and saves the black boots for his social league games. Of course, social league coming up, stat man. More silverware for the uh, die-hard frockers of all the social leagues at Futsal Oz. But now we're, we're talking uh, Premiership and uh, uh, League Cup. Oh, my oh. God, a strike by Leonardo Carrera into the roof of the net, Neil. What a lovely strike there. A half turn, half hit volley. Look at the reflexes. Oh, he's been a consistent performer for many years in the V-League, Leonardo Carrera. Always kicking in one or two, even three goals. Formerly of Fitzroy. Crossed over Cash Burden. And once they had a little stint at FC Melbourne too from the mill. It was a great stint there. Uh, I believe he was chairman. He's moved over now to Ooh. Ashburn. Is he the president of Ashburn? He's the pre uh, president now. The para and, uh, and, uh, the and uh, if you, if, Yes, the secretaries. If you remember, Leonardo Gray was in line to win top goal scorer for about half a season. Oh! Hey, did you see that, Neil? This boy could turn this game on its ear. What a strike, Neil. Katharinas was down low. There you go again. Oh, look, this other... Stay out, boy. He has rocket power in that left foot of his. And then, if he can keep his cool, Alicevic, is that his new name? Yeah, yeah, I spoke to him before the game last week. You have a out. word to him every week, Stan, man. It's, it's hilarious. But it's true, he needs it, to keep it. He does. Tavares, who's a true does well because he sees it out of danger. Tommy Robinson, aka uh, 
James Danos 2.0. It's Roboto, so streaming forward. Gets its way to Correa. He's going to do the dance. He does oh, the dance. Correa has done it again, Neil. And puts Ashburn back in front. What a great game we've got on our hands. And we've got a packed stadium at the moment watching this great game, Neil. The Samba King. Watch that. Oh, breaking hearts on the dance floor since 2007. Ruins his debut season, Stan, can you tell me that? 2-10, Neil. Tearing up that dance floor, that beautiful blue dance floor. Kausevich. Nice free-flowing futsal here. Oh, see, it's great turn. He just lost a bit of control of him. How, how, there is that left foot, and I was stamming, how excited do you get when it falls to that left foot is, and you know that strike is coming? <laughs> you know, you can roll it. We talk about people's, we talk about the front, and this bloke's just got just as equal as Because he, he, he can hit There's any player in the league. You yeah. know why, Steady? He's uh, a rare breed of players who can hit it off one step and... Uh, With you, power. You know what I mean, Steady? We haven't seen a, a strike like that for a while, have we now? Yeah, you're absolutely right, yeah. Since, uh, who's that lad that used to play for Ashburton? Anyway, that's, that's history. That's in the past. It's uh, a match of the player. round time here. What about premiership players, lad? Is he a premiership player? The stat man! Here's one lad who surely will be in the next few seasons. Sufian Sufi. And he says he wants to stick it out with his Ashburn signing. Can you see him taking out silverware next season, stat man? Yes, there's a possibility. Probably. This season in the League Cup. Yeah, there are a chance in the League Cup. I think Big Bank got two more from the silverware. They almost beat uh, Pasco Val a few weeks ago. That was heartbreak. And here's the thing. If they face uh, Pasco Val in the FOS Cup, they're going to be out for blood sat there. Well, not blood, silverware. Silverware, Neil. But chair is it in. Kith Aridis does well. And while he's getting his goal, he's crushed. You said it's time to check on Borchette. Oh, well, that's why you had him in a figure four leg lock, stat man. Just over two minutes left, and uh, seems like Ashburton. And that's it. From past halfway. And, and that was gymnast. only it was only a five out of ten for the gymnast from the Olympic judges here at Futsal Oz. Yeah, he was smart, he only deserved the five because he's standing up and he just pumped it over the top. But we love the ten out of tens and the nine point nines. Oh, oh, yes! Nine point nine! Oh, nine point nine! Nine point nine! They got back in the game, Neil! Three two, great save by Harry, but there was no defenders to kill her off the long foot and then Snoopy just came along and said thank you very much. Oh, well, the game nine, on. It's 9.9's mean nothing because it's a 1.4 oh, game. And he's a 9.9 nil. And he's banging the blue surface. Next thing you know, he'll be licking it. <laughs> well, oh, no, what a be, game, Neil. He'll be soaking up the froth because it never ends here at Futsal Oz. It's a, well, with a minute and 30 left, and this is. Brimbank's got the momentum, and we've seen teams pinch three points. Here it is. Is it coming? Yes, it is. Bring back, back on level terms, Neil. What a game. Aiden Alessandri, you are a sick. No, you're not. Not yet. <laughs> oh, stat man. It's a hat trick, though, from the big striker. And look who it is linking up there. Oh, Carriage has been so instrumental the past few weeks. Neil, how many goals has this young man moved on to now? Well, you're the stat man. You tell me. Gets up, take it quick, get the readers, pinch the win. Most Cristiano Barkada instructions. This is Correa. Oh, can it be heartbreak for the Brimbank lads? Ashburn still trying to mend the wounds. Alicevic, get the readers. And what is Sufi doing back there? <laughs> trying to dribble it out from defence and get the readers just aims it at the scoreboard. And he's got it. Shows his front and shows the readers is crossing at the mouth. Great so game. So he's Mick Hubler in the Brimbank points because the salvage are precious. Precious point. Look at that save, those long legs with those white boots of his. An important save, and imagine that one went in, hit the reader. So, At the end of the day, happy. Probably when I was looking at the score 4 2, we dominated the game and we're down, so you're thinking about a loss, it's pretty bad. But at the end of the day, a draw in the last minute, which they should have held on, they didn't. So, at the end of the day, for us, happy. Run home, it's yeah, it's pretty good. Like it's, all games are six pointers, pretty much. It's going to be everything on the line. So, I mean, we lose, we're pretty much dead and buried. We win, we're right in the mix for top eight. So it'll be exciting.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we round up round 17 action of the V League. And what a way it is to follow up a stunning match of the round. Old time rivals went head to head with Metropolitan. Of course, in the past, it's been Pasco Vale who upset Metropolitan in cup finals and, of course, in league clashes. Metropolitan always sitting second to this Pasco Vale outfit, so when they go head to head, they always mean business. Ali Redzepovic gave the Sky Blues an early lead, but it was the Golden Boy De Silva who kept one back, and then Vadim Mazuski from a great angle to give him a 2 1 lead heading into half time. Kieran Stroh then produced one of the saves of the season, denying Alexander Stevanovic a spectacular effort. The keeper who had made his way down all the way from Canberra for the night won, of course, the MVP award at the Nationals tournament in January this year. Along with one of the goals of the night from the Golden Boy, the save proved to be very instrumental, breaking the backs of the Sky Blues. Pascoval in the end, rushing off to three gold victors. Another precious three points in the title hunt against North Melbourne. Here's what Mr MVP had to say after the match. Andre had been sucking it up to me all week, uh, the importance of this game. Um, came down here not really knowing what to expect. I mean, I've watched the games on uh, to YouTube, which excellent. Um, it looks better here than it does on YouTube. Right? It's just so fast, shots from everywhere. It's really good. Um, but geez, they put up a good fight. I think on balance we might have been the better team, but yeah, we got there in the end. The last clash of the night saw teams with a lot at stake. Of course, the relegation battles are looming, and things can either go one way or the other. That is relegation battles or F Oz Cup glory. And it was Mickelham who got off to a flying start. If there's any chance of them staying in F Oz Cup contention, they needed a precious six point victory over CF Brunswick. It seemed well on track, but of course, Mr. Dangerous himself, Jose Cortillo, then pegged it back for the Bloods. First was a left foot effort, then a thumping free kick, followed up by some tenacious defending to set up Mikey Sharples and give Brunswick the lead. At the other end though, it was an informed Ben Gearbach who put Mikkelen back on level terms. The punisher Mikey Sharples seems to be returning quite well from that injury which kept him out for a few months. Some great foot skills set up May Pigger, who once again got a precious goal this week for Brunswick, giving him a two goal buffer heading into half time. From then on out, it was Brunswick who took control of the match, the punisher Mikey Sharples and Jose Portillo proving to be a lethal pairing up front. Manager Nick Ignatidis getting the boys pumped up, knowing how vital this clash was in the scheme of getting into FOS Cup glory. Of course, in League Cup action, CF Brunswick disappointingly got knocked out by Fitzroy last Friday night. Well, that was probably our grand final. If we uh, didn't win that or got a draw out of that game, we are basically near, near certain for relegation playoffs. So if not getting relegated, so it was our grand final tonight. A bumper crowd rolled in for the last clash of the night, Essendon taking on Paran, the two rivals of course from the inaugural FOS Cup, Paran being victors all those seasons ago. Maxi Avram got him off to a flying start, but a returning Kratz was to put him on equal terms just moments later. He popped up quickly after being failed by Michael Charmy. Despite being called play on, Kratz was clearly not happy. Moments later, he saw red as the opportunity arose. First he rattled the crossbar, and then he rattled goalkeeper Michael Charmy. No doubt in anyone's mind that this was a red card offence. With Kratz out of the picture just 10 minutes into the game, it was Paran who would have taken advantage. Conmacris did all he could do in goals, producing a fine number of saves. But it was Paran and the silky foot skills of Marcus Barbosa, which proved too much for the Essendon side. Ahmed Azam, the latest transfer from two-time Premier's Pasco Val, also did his part. He seems to be growing in confidence week in, week out in these Paran colours. Melitas pegged one back for Essendon before half-time, but it proved useless. With a four-goal lead, Paran were always going to run away victors in the end. Hippotran got on the score sheet once again for the Paran outfit, and one of their main strengths heading into the cup end of the season is the fact that every player gets on the score sheet week in, week out. Some good signs for Essendon heading into Friday night's League Cup game. Strikers finding their scoring boots. But they better be careful if they come head to head with this Paran side and Cup specialist Marcus Barbosa. Yeah, we have a very strong team coming on to the Cup. I love playing the Cups, I guess. I sort of like just turn it up and, and go hard. You know, it's only three games and might as well do the best as you can. And I'm pretty confident. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Round 17 action summed up. 
No real upsets on the night. Perhaps the only one giving tipsters headaches was that match of the round, Brimbank versus Ashburton. Rarely do we see the tipsters uh, tipping a draw, but on that one, however, perhaps it was best that honours were even. A very tight affair indeed. As usual, towards the end of the season, things are really heating up as we see the title race pan out and the relegations pan out. It's a two-horse race up top, North Melbourne and Pasco Vale. Well, only one point separating them and goal difference full well pegged back. North Melbourne getting 10 goals on the night to put them uh, positive up there. And of course, as we look at the beautiful rear end of the V-League ladder, Brunswick and Brimbank, well, they are just in reaching distance of that elusive eighth spot. And both those teams, of course, not afraid of relegation battles as we've seen in the past. Golden boy, Joao da Silva, well, he's three goals ahead for that prestigious award, the top goal scorers. Maxi Avram, however, well, he's never won the award and a lot of pundits feel that he is full well in line to receive his first title in that category. Next week's clashes, Brimbank take on Essendon to start off the card. That's going to be a very even affair, but perhaps the match of the round goes to North Melbourne and CF Brunswick. There were fireworks last time those two teams met and expect and nothing different this week. That's why you gotta come down 407 Victoria Street, Brunswick, and come down, of course, on a Sunday night to see state league action. The race for first place is really heating up, and of course, that would mean that you could take out the prestigious award of being state league champions, but not only that, it means instant qualification into the 2012 V League season. Ladies and gentlemen, Thanks again for joining us. We'll leave you now with goal of the week time. Enjoy. Watch out, those are the teams that come across Brunswick that come. See if they make it, you're not, if they will. Steady. Yes. Any other player scores four goals, and we tend to go a little bit eight. Portillo scores it, and it's just no surprise. He's not at it again, is he? Oh!